This year, the 26th annual conference for the Association for Theater and Higher Education takes place in Washington, D.C. I was overwhelmed by walking out the front door and looking up the street and within a block seeing the Capitol. I've always been somebody that's been attracted to the scale and size and beauty of permanent monuments, but it, it struck me that the National Mall itself is a demonstration of a performance because we activate the same kinds of responses that we do as an audience to a performative event when we, let's say, walk past the Vietnam Veterans Memorial or the World War II Memorial. That sense of engagement between the viewer and the artwork is the same dynamic that one experiences when watching an element of live performance. Like the monuments, we find that the human body is also an element of performance. And so, so we also look at non-traditional forms of performance as well as classical forms of performance. In Washington, D.C., we were lucky enough to work with Synetic Theater Company, a physical theater company that often works. Their specialty is producing Shakespeare without words utilizing the human body as a tool of communication. It's a very exciting technique and it's also one that instructors could use to enliven, enhance, and generate new kinds of work in their own universities. Perhaps one of the most essential functions of the arts and culture is to provide a voice for the voiceless whether that voiceless community is uh, veterans or minorities or uh, d different genders or sexual orientation or children. It's essential that the arts provide an outlet to express the needs and concerns of different communities. So I think that we can use artistic expression theater, live performance, as a way to soothe, educate, inform, and comfort in times of trauma. One of the most important ways that we can make ourselves indispensable, make the arts essential in a national fabric, is to show the way that arts training can help across the board in whatever field one chooses to pursue. Interesting statistic came out a few years ago finding that human resources departments in most of the Fortune 500 companies look for things like collaboration, team building, creative problem solving skills, thinking outside the box. And these are the very skills that we teach as theater educators. So it places us in a position to show how essential the kind of training we do will help students across the board in whatever field they might choose to pursue.